Let's pay homage to the lineage gurus, homage to the venerable monk Liao Ming, homage to Master Sakya Zheng Kong, homage to His Holiness the Sixteenth Kamapa, and homage to Master Dukdun Dorashi. Homage to the three jewels of the altar. Homage to the main deity of the good practice this evening, the yellow jambala. Sumo. Tanzen Katsu to the city. All Dhamma masters, Dhamma educators, Dhamma teachers, Dhamma instructors, Dhamma tutors, and temple and center directors, and all disciples present here and over the internet. Good evening. How do you do? Uh, these are greetings in different languages. I stand up. Chanane. Ola Meko. Ola Meko. Take your mocho. Sukoin. Itiba. Timothy. Jimmy. Yapi. Yapi. Very Last week, we practice Manohara, the wealth attracting goddess and bestowing wealth and today we had the group practice of Yellow Jambala by Shravana. They are both well deities. One was an emanation of Amitabha Buddha's heart and the other one is the wealth deity from the four heavenly kings, heavens. <laughs> and the four heavenly kings are closer to the human world. And Manohara, Vasudhara, is a wealth deity emanated by a Buddha. And the yellow jambala, one of the four heavenly kings, and in the Buddhist sutra, it's written that yellow jambala is at the northern part of Mount Meru. So this deity is also considered a wealth deity. So we consider him to be a wealth deity in the heavenly realm. And the four heavenly kings are protectors and supporters of Buddha Dharma. And also, they also protect and support all two Buddha school disciples. So, by practicing this Dharma practice, you would increase or enhance your good luck, and you will be endowed with uh, money that you earn as well as money that you obtain as gifts. And the most important one is the Dharma wealth, which is the merit of your acts of givings and charities. 
And after you receive windfalls, then you need to do charities and perform acts of givings. And Buddha Dharma states to avoid all evil and to always do good. And doing good mostly means to help all sentient beings. That's considered good. To help all sentient beings is good. And what bodhisattvas are doing is to enlighten sentient beings so sentient beings can gain enlightenment. So that is giving dharma. So you can give wealth, give dharma, and give fearlessness, which means the fearlessness in equality in giving. Generally speaking, giving, generosity, is for those people that you know. And one kind is giving fearlessness, fearlessly, which is you give equally to all people, whether you have affinity or whether you know them or not. That means you love and you are compassionate toward all equally. This is important. So you don't give just to the people you know, but you give to all people equally, including those that you don't know. Then you will increase your own good fortune and merit. Mm, this is Q&A. I don't think it's so funny, though. The question is, is the man Cooler or the woman cooler? It's it's like a nickname. Which one is? Yeah. The answer. How should I say? From ancient time, the men say that they are heroes, and the women say they are beauties. And yet, the heroes cannot win over beauties. And the man said that he's a gentleman, and the woman said she's a virgin. Then the result is the slim lady and wanted by the man. And the man said he's strong, and the woman said it's very gentle, and yet the gentleness wins over strength. And the man says he's great, and the woman said that she's even greater because all the great men were born by the greatest woman, by great woman. And man said that he can conquer the world, and woman conquer the man. So the woman conquered the man and the world. This is a joke. In the delivery room, uh, the wife who's giving birth told the husband, I keep wanting to tell you that I had a, a plastic surgery on my eyes, on my nose, on my chin. So if 
the baby doesn't look at me, don't be surprised. And the husband comforted her and said, oh, I knew from long ago. But and what shocked me was that I, <laughs> I had myself uh, what's that called? tight. And how could uh, you get pregnant still? So the world has changed. The teacher asked me, um, everybody should be patient. Rome was not built in one day. And Ming replied, but teacher, but you asked us to finish the homework in one day. So the teacher couldn't say anything. Mm, this is not a good joke. How can they say that? Mm, this is not so funny. Let me say it this way then. Just think of it as a joke. Uh, this is not about prejudice or racism. There is an African that visited a city and the city was burned and the African person without wearing anything flew out and the fireman said wow, how could he ran so fast when it's burned like that There was another joke that's similar. A Taiwanese came to study to America. And he lived in a black American family and treated him really nicely and wonderfully. Uh, give him lots of hospitality and welcome him. Very kind and felt warm and felt at home. So he asked them, how come you're so nice to me? And the black American family, husband and wife said, we went to Taiwan, we visited Taiwan, and Taiwanese are so kind because they went to pray at the temple in Tainan and and the deities there were all black. <laughs> because they all have black faced deities. So, because uh, Taiwanese uh, pray to the Africans as gods. Ming asked his dad, Dad, you fight with mom for so many years. 
How did you, how do you live your life? It's because of you. And me was very touched and become teary because you and mom wanted to give me a, a, f- a sense of family so you don't want to get separated. Right? Oh, when you were four, we had a contract. So whoever that that wants wants a divorce, then they would get this kid. So now we'll do the question and answer. Question from Malaysia, Lian Hua Li Hong. Just call me little kid. Hmm? So is this person a little kid? I often pray for other people and dedicate the merit of my Dharma practice. And I found that the people are short-tempered and angry people or they have heavy karma then I can feel that it's impossible to help them. Is this the right feeling? So I often pray for other people and dedicate the merit of my Dharma practice. And he found that if the the, the receivers were angry people and have grave karmic transgressions and often lose tempers, then I feel that the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas has have no way to help them. And the prayer doesn't work. Is this normal? So he asked me and now I'm asking all of you. Is that normal or not? Nobody answered. This question was asked by a little kid. And yet the adults do not answer. (laughs) So let's ask those three little girls to answer. You came from Indonesia, right? The Patmasuchi temple there. So how would you answer? Do they understand? So the little kid answered. Just say yes or no, that's it. The answer was yes. <laughs> That's the answer. Uh, uh, when the person that you're dedicating to a short tempered and angry pe- person people. So why would the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas bless them? Well, the answer of the little girls, right? And they often violate a heavy or grave precepts and always angry. Of course, there's no use for other people to dedicate merits and help them. You should be normal.
at least. Now we will get into the Vimala Kirti Sutra exposition. Today we will talk about precious hand Bodhisattva, precious seals hand Bodhisattva, raising hand Bodhisattva, and lowering hand Bodhisattva. Therefore, with four hands. A human being has two hands. If we say three hand, three handed person is a pickpocket. So precious hand Bodhisattva, precious seals hand Bodhisattva, raising hand Bodhisattva, lowering hand Bodhisattva. So uh, sometimes you cannot explain directly. Recent, recently, I have watched a Buddhist scholar from mainland China, China mainland, by the name Li. How do you pronounce that name? Li Chen. Li Chen. Li Chen. Li Chen's book. He said, those who the translation from Sanskrit sutras of the Buddha into Chinese and the translator called Chen Zhen Di. The other one called Xuan Zhuang, which is the primary actor of the journey to the West. The monk from the Tang dynasty who went to India to seek Dharma. The monk Xuan Zhang. And another one was called Yi Jing. And another one. Were the Tibetans who translated from Sanskrit into Tibetan, and the translations themselves differ from each other. According to Li Chen, the translation by Yi Jing was called a direct translation. That's direct translation. So whatever word in Sanskrit, you just translate that into a Chinese word. That's called direct translation by Yi Jing. And the translation by Xuan Zhuang was the meaning translation. So he translated a phrase or an excerpt, the meaning of that excerpt, and translated the meaning of that of a phrase or excerpt. So translation is not an easy matter. They are direct translation and meaning translation. <laughs> I often speak this in English, your mother good. That's direct translation from the Chinese, your mother good. <laughs> Which is, is your mother good? But actually it's curse word, a curse word. Your mother good. But in English, it became, it becomes your mother good. And translated into Chinese, ni ma ke hao. That's called direct translation. Actually, you know what that is. But the real, if you translate the real meaning of it, then it would have been a bad sentence. It's not sending greeting to your mom. 
It's not that. This is your mother of good. It has a connotation of a curse, curse word, cursing. So you should not, you cannot directly translate many words. In Taiwanese, there is, uh, have you eaten? In Chinese, but if you glare each other and you say that, have you eaten? That's different. That that's scolding. It's like you know. So you have your full tummy and have have nothing to do. And you you want me to punch you? So the tone of voice is different too. You know, we Taiwanese greet each other with, oh, have you eaten today? We always talk around eating. That's greetings. Oh, have you eaten? Do you have anything to eat, kind of? But you cannot eat like when somebody just got out from a toilet. <laughs> did you have, did you eat? <laughs> And of course, he would get angry. <laughs> did you eat? So it's kind of like, did you eat? So but that's a greeting in Taiwan. It's not really that if you have eaten or not. And if two gangsters talking to each other, like, did you eat? It's like you're uh, challenging each other. You know, you. Uh, that's not greetings in that case. So the translation of Xuan Zhuang was a meaning translation. So he translated the key meanings of the Buddhist sutras. But the translation by Yi Jing is the. It's word by word. So. Have you eaten? Becomes have you eaten? And the, the meaning was lost in the translation. So languages are really quite profound. So it's not easy to translate the Buddhist sutras. And the monk Xuanzhuang could translate the meaning, the key meanings of the sutras. So here, talking about the precious hand, Bodhisattva, <laughs> if it is a direct translation, it's the Bodhisattva with the very precious hand. So that's a direct translation. But that's not the meaning. It's because this Bodhisattva frequently uses his hand to touch the heads of sentient beings. And what benefit that is? That's giving blessings by touching the heads. So when he gives blessing on your head, if he's a real Bodhisattva, with the which is who is a high adept with the touching on your head, then you would gain wisdom immediately. And you would know about your past lives. And you can liberate yourself from all your worries and afflictions. And if you have ailments on your body, with one touch or on your eye, and then your eye illness is gone. Or if you have pain on your shoulder or arms, then the pain is gone. So they can alleviate your afflictions and your pains and sufferings and can develop or open uh, your wisdom. This kind of bodhisattva is called the precious hand bodhisattva. So there's meaning behind this name. So that's meaning translation. So it's not a bodhisattva with the 
a very uh, precious hand. So then there would be a word, uh, a word translation, not meaning translation. But he uses his hand to bless all the sentient beings so that the afflictions of sentient beings will lessen, their pain and suffering will lessen, their misery will lessen, and in addition, by the touch of his hand, that uh, your wisdom will develop and you would know about their past lives. Just now we watch the video clip prepared by T.B. Boye Foundation talking about book number 291, The Miraculous Acts of the Dharma King which I will sign later tonight. One time, Grandmaster touched the head of Dharma Sister Cheryl. Surely. <laughs> Her nickname is the waitress of our kitchen. And after that blessing, it was incredible. That night, all night, she watched her past lives all the way to the era of Sakyamuni Buddha. All her past lives appear clearly, vividly in front of her eyes. The one with such capability is called the precious hand Bodhisattva. It's written in my book about Dharma Sister Lin, Shirley Lin, about that article that she knows and watched her past lives. That was Precious Hand Bodhisattva. The next one is Precious Seals. Oh, head gesture Bodhisattva. So a uh, direct translation would mean like uh, this Bodhisattva has a precious seal or his hand is like a precious seal. But the meaning translation this Bodhisattva comprehends the three Dharma seals, the seals that the Buddha said refers to the ultimate truth. So the seals refers to the unchanging truth which is everything is impermanent. In this world, there is nothing that stays forever. And that is called everything is impermanent. So Sakyamuni Buddha teaches the three Dharma seals. First, everything is impermanent. Everything in the human world is ever-changing. Nothing remains the same, including human beings. Uh, if I show you my photo from in my 20s, that would look different from the way I look now. Many people have seen my photo when I was in my 20s. Wow, so handsome. And some ladies <laughs> would uh, blow kiss oh. on it to the picture. And now it's different. So that's called a change. A human will always change. 
from babies, toddlers, children, adults, middle ages, and old age. They are ever changing every day. Every day. Humans change. Houses too change. You bought a new house and now it becomes an old house and then it's uh, demolished. Yeah, a new car that you just bought is new. After a few years, it becomes a second-hand car. And after it becomes an old car. And then it, it became a, a, a junk metal. So the same with cars. So everything is ever-changing, including the earth. In the past, October in Seattle was raining all the time, and it was cool, very cold. But today, I thought it was cold, but it, so I wore this. But look at Sito, the lion head from England, and she's very skimpy in her dress. <laughs> Please stand up. She's wearing summer dress and I'm wearing winter clothes. So Seattle has changed too. It's not cold at all here in October now. It should be cooler. And in autumn, it's wind and rain, days after days for months or two. But now, instead, we have fire, and there's no rain at all. So the weather has changed. It has warmed up. It has become warm. So the sky is ever changing, the earth's ever changing, the peoples are ever changing. So that's everything is impermanence. That's the ultimate truth. And the second truth is that nothing has self nature or has self. I asked uh, the reverend Lian Sui, who are you? Because Sui means who? Lotus who? So, who are you? Ask yourself, who are you? Lotus who? Where are you? The past you? Where is the past you? Where is the current you? Where is the future you? The, or the current I? The past I, the future I. There is no I. There is no self. Everything has no self. And self or I basically don't exist. So Lotus Hu had written an article. It was very good. And I will include it in book number 293. Or 294, I'm not sure. 293, I think. So often ask yourself, who are you? Because you're ever changing. You never stay the same for even one day. So what's really going on with you? What's going on with your coming to this world? Where is the past you? Where is the present you? And where is the future you? So this is the ultimate truth. Everything has no inherent nature. That everything 
is an aggregate, a combination. So you need to recognize your original or your innate nature, your original nature. Like this, we know it's wood. The chair is made of wood. In the past, it was a tree. And the toilet seat cover was also made of wood. And many of the statues are also made of wood and also bronze. So it was bronze before, and now they are made into statues. Or you can make the bronze into a urine, urinal, uh, like a, a urinal pot. So one is a, they are all made of bronze. One is a, a Buddha statue that's being admired, and the other one is a pot where you can pee into. So that means there's no self-nature in everything, no inherent nature in everything. And the last truth is that nirvana is extinction, that everything turns into emptiness. It is unattainability. What can you attain in the future? So what is unattainability? It is emptiness. So, nirvana is extinction, that all sentient beings are amid nirvana, amid next extinction. And that's the empty nature. So, nirvana is extinction refers to the empty nature. And the fourth truth that the, the real phenomena is empty nature, and empty nature is the real phenomena. These are the ultimate truths of the Buddha. So if you understand these ultimate truths and teach them to sentient beings, they will be called the precious seals hand bodhisattva. And then the raising hand Bodhisattva. So always having his hand raised, even when he's sleeping, or going to the toilets. Like if you want to answer the teacher's question, you can raise your hand. But this raising hand Bodhisattva, then you always have your hands raised at all times. That would be a direct translation, but that's not the case. It means that he transformed Buddha Dharma into deliverance of sandy beings. So this raising hand bodhisattva is a bodhisattva who always uh, delivers sandy beings. He bear the great work of the Tathagata with one hand or two hands. So he bear the uh, the responsible, the duty of delivering sentient beings of the Tathagata. So, this raising hand Bodhisattva is not someone who always raises their hands. That would be a direct translation into Chinese too, but the key meaning here is that he carry the responsibility or the great work of the Tathagata to deliver sentient beings. So he is a Bodhisattva who is constantly delivering sentient beings.
所以你们要讲解出来啊，啊，不能说哦念过了就算了。Explain the meaning, not just by reciting it. Many other people explain it. They would just write it. Many other people explain it. They would just write it. Many other people explain it. They would just write it. Many other people explain it. They would just write it. Many other people explain it. They would just write it. Many other people explain it. They would just write it. Many other people explain it. They would just write it. Many other people explain it. They would just write it. Many other people explain it. They would just write it. Many other people explain it. They would just write it. Many other people explain it. They would just write it. Many other people explain it. They would just write it. Many other people explain it. They would just write it. Many other people explain it. They would just write it. Many other people explain it. They would just write it. Many other people explain it. They would just write it. Many other people explain it. They would just write it. Many other people explain it. They would just write it. Many other people explain it. They would just write it. Many other people explain it. They would just write it. Many other people explain it. They would just write it. Many other people explain it. They would just write it. Many other people explain it. They would just write it. Many other people explain it. They would just write it. Many other people explain it. They would just write So the raising hand bodhisattva is not the bodhisattva who always raising his hands. Does does that mean that he's surrendering? So he's surrendering, walking out from the forest. No, that's not the case. That his two hands are like carrying a pole on his shoulder. The duty of the Tathagata to deliver sentient beings. And the next one is lowering hand Bodhisattva. So both of his hands are lowered. So. When the hands are raised, he is delivering sentient being. But how about when the hands lowered? So the direct translation would be lowering hand bodhisattva. The three. <laughs> the lowering hand bodhisattva would be the three-handed person in a bus. That your pocket is his pocket. When you don't pay attention, then he would extend his third hand to pick something out of your pocket. No, that's not the case. So he's the one who lowers his hands to to meet and guide sentient beings. Like some of the mudra of a Buddha would be extended down, like this. So this is the bodhisattva who guides sentient beings to the better realms. That's called raising or lowering hand bodhisattvas. Now, do you understand this morning? So, so, people ask you, "What is the lowering hand? What is the lowering hand? What is the lowering hand? What is the lowering hand? So, it's not that they always raise their hands or they always lower their hands. So, the raising hand bodhisattva is bearing the responsibilities of the Tathagata to deliver sentient beings. And then the lowering hand bodhisattva is the bodhisattva who always guides sentient beings to a better place. So we have there are four hands, four bodhisattvas with hand. Listen, precious hand bodhisattva who uses hands to touch, to give blessings on the heads of sentient beings to alleviate their difficulties and sufferings. The precious seal's hand bodhisattva is the one who understands the three dharma seals, and the raising hand bodhisattva is the bodhisattva who always delivers sentient beings, and lowering hand bodhisattva is the bodhisattva who always guides sentient beings to a better way. Now you understand the meanings of these bodhisattvas. In a bus, there was a, a couple of women, and the daughter cried, Daddy, I'm so ugly. And Dad said, don't cry. It doesn't matter how ugly you are, you're my daughter. And someone heard that. And 
that God got an idea and text is her dad. I'm so ugly and dad replied, don't worry, I'm ugly too. Hmm? Uh, a noble lady and an old woman got into an argument. And the noble woman said, Are you trying to compare it to me? You know, have you eaten what I've eaten? Have you worn what I've worn? And then that old lady replied, You know, the, the one, the thing that I have not worn is the, uh, what's that called? The cloth that you wear when you die. <laughs> oh, I haven't eaten any poo. Uh, after a day, a full day's work, the wife got home, and the husband was very kind and asked, Are you tired? Yeah, a little bit. Are you hungry? So I'm famished. And the husband replied, well, take a little rest and then cook something. <laughs> oh, my,